start, can we all just can we um can we all just go around and every all the kids can tell me their names one by one and what grade you're in? Can we start with that? That's a great idea. And Maya and Shavita, okay. if you could turn your videos on, that would be awesome. So that many we can see you and the kids. Um, so we are on, we are recording this session as always. Damini, take it over. Thank you for doing this for us. Of course. So let's start with uh, Mamda. Is that your name? Hi, I'm in second grade. Great. Okay, then next is Rian. I'm in kindergarten. Kin kindergarten, great. Um, Neva? Um, I'm from pre-K and my aunt, um, hello, what's my name? Who? What's her name? Who's name? Say my name. <laughs> your name, you already told your name. But she's in pre-K right now. She's joining kindergarten in September. I'm almost in kindergarten. I'm in um, pre-K. Great. Um, next is Indu. You need me to introduce myself. <laughs> All right, I'm Damini Vivi's friend on the ATG team, so I'm going to learn today as well. Oh, sorry. You don't need to know my age, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's a secret. We don't reveal our ages. Next, Ariana. Hi. I, I am in third grade. Third grade, great. And uh, hi, Ruthvi. Hi. My, and I am almost in first grade, but still in kindergarten. Great. In September, you'll be in first grade. My God. Amazing. Shavita? I'm in third grade. Third grade. Good job. And Tanya? I'm in sixth grade. Nice. And uh, next is NB. That's me. Neetu. Neetu. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And then in the end, we have, oh, we have Tanya. Tanya and Maya. Hi, Tanya. You're on mute. Hey, sorry. No, this is actually Rohan, my son. Oh. <laughs> and he's the one who's in sixth grade, not me, unfortunately. <laughs> Great. Awesome. And, and my, last, but Maya's last my daughter. Oh, Maya, Maya, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Maya. I'm in ninth grade. Hi. Okay, Hi. that's the high schooler. Great. Awesome. Okay, so let's get started now. So now this session that I'm going to do with you guys, it's about something which we all already know. We all know what our mantras, we all know what our shlokas, right? If we don't, we can, I'll, today we learn that. Okay, so everybody can see my screen, right? Let me know if anybody cannot. I can't. No, you can't. You can? No, I can. Yeah, no, I can. Awesome. Okay. So let's start with mantra. So what is a mantra basically? So mantra is, it's a combination of different sounds and different phrases. Okay. So which is, so let's talk about the most popular mantra that is there right now, which is very simple and everybody has heard of it. It's called Om. So Om is a mantra. So mantra is basically a collection of sounds, right? It may or may not have a particular meaning. So what used to happen like in the old days, like say our grandparents or even their parents before that. So what used to happen is many people used to have gurus, right? So they used to take spiritual guidance from their gurus. And the gurus would then give them out specific mantras, depending on, you know, what kind of tradition that guru follows and, you know, what kind of practices that they are given. 
but these days like mm, in current times you know we that uh, tradition is not there anymore but we can just follow mantras and recite them anyone can do that you don't really have to um ha need a guru to initiate that um let me share again so mantras are basically sounds a collection of sounds each mantra has a spiritual a big spiritual significance okay so let's we we'll just talk about a few very very popular mantras that everybody should know okay there are there are like maybe thousands and thousands of mantras in hinduism right now but we are going to just touch over a few of the easy ones that almost everybody would know um does everybody recognize the symbol yes 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 what is it called om 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 great so this is om so everybody knows what's om right everybody can recite om So can we all just uh, can we all just sit straight? Let's keep our back straight, okay? And everybody just close their eyes and let's say Om. 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 Good job, guys. Okay. So, um, so when we chant something like Om, right? Now, I won't go into too much detail of these things because I don't want to confuse you guys. But in every human body, we have seven chakras, right? They are like the centers of energy, basically. So when you chant a mantra like Om. all those centers of energy they get activated right so let's say uh, somebody has these seven centers of energy and say two or three of them are not activated or is very dull that person can you know they they might feel a little tired they might feel a little sick they might feel like oh right. i cannot oh i cannot mm. concentrate on anything oh i cannot focus if i'm trying to sleep i cannot sleep Is our camera on? Yeah. Things like that. So by chanting these mantras, chakra. right? If you sit and chant them, chant chakra. All, your, all the seven root chakras chakra. they get root activated. Chakra. Root chakra. Mom, I don't understand. So is he good? No, right? Second. Let me. Okay. All right. Sorry. so um yeah so these are the seven chakras that are there in our body and they all get activated and energized when we chant these mantras let's talk about the most popular mantra which kashmiri hindus kashmiri pandits follow which is om namah shivaya everybody has heard of om namah shivaya yeah yeah who can tell me what it means so it's very simple om namah shivaya as the name suggests it's a mantra which is dedicated to lord shiva okay so basically what it literally means remember earlier i told you that the mantras don't really have to mean something but roughly translated it means i bow down to lord shiva or you can also say like my salutations to shiva salutations is like doing this like when you do namaste and you bow down that's called a salutation so i bow down to lord shiva my salutations to lord shiva that's the meaning of om namah shivaya so you got to okay kya hone be and kya hone be that means kya hone to lord shiva and kya hone namah shivaya namah means i bow down to shiva which tarani me in kabo okay so now let's everybody is ready to repeat after me you have a question mamta you can ask me go ahead ask me uh, i just uh, i just thank 
I'm going to say to my copy. I can listen more Rama before. And it's well, pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. I agree with you. And now I know what I'm going to look like when I grow up. Okay, great. Okay, everybody. So let's just sit straight now, like we did before. Back straight. Okay. Your hands can be on your lap like this. Okay. And everybody, close your eyes and repeat after me. Om Namah Shivaya. Loud and say. Say it now. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Good job, Rian. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Okay. So we chanted that mantra five times. Okay. So traditionally in our Kashmiri culture, we will chant the mantra either three times, five times, seven times, 11 times, 21 times, or 108 times. Okay. So usually these are, we always chant in odd numbers. Usually we do not just chant twice or eight times or 10 times and leave it. Okay, so either we chant three times, five times, seven times, 11 times, or 108 times. So does anybody know how people chant 108 times? Do you, there's a tool that you can use to chant it like 108 times if you want, because it's very hard to keep count, right? Okay, is this the 21st time? Is this the 50th time? How do you do that? there is something called Rudraksh Mala. Okay, it's like a gal, it's like a mala made of beads. So you chant those beads and you count and you don't have to count anything. You just keep chanting Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai till that mala gets over. And that's how you know that you have finished chanting 108 times. Okay. So now- Trinav, you have a question, Trinav, you're raising your hand. Yeah, you said that uh, we only count in odd numbers, but how is 108 odd? Because 108 yeah, 108 is not an odd number, correct. So it's either like 3, 5, 7, 11, or 108. Yes, okay. Marta? Uh when you were asking the question, I I will I answered B because my brain would tell totally get that out of the way. Yeah. Sure, you did. All right, cool. Uh, Ruthvi, you have a question? That how how <clears throat> Does the Rudraksh have to hatch with something? What? Hats to what? Hatch with something. No, so Rudraksh is just a mala. You know, like a necklace that you wear on your neck? It's like a necklace made up of 108 beads. Right? So when you chant it, you, you take one bead, two beads, three beads like that. Oh. Okay, it's like a necklace made out of 108 small beads. That's called a Rudraksh Mala. Oh. Okay. So now let's say you don't have time to uh, chant 108 times every day. That's fine. That's totally fine. You can chant it like, like I mentioned, you can chant it three times, five times, anything. But the only important thing you have to remember is sit comfortably in a place. You, don't, you should not be uncomfortable when you're chanting it right? And your back has to be straight. Because if your back is not straight, remember I talked to you about this, um, 
about the energy chakras. So if you're sitting in a straight position and your back is straight, and when you're chanting this mantra, all your energy chakras get activated one by one. But if you're sitting like this or like this or like this, that's not going to happen easily. So that's why it's recommended you sit in a straight position, right? Your back, head, everything has to be straight and aligned. And close your eyes, think of Lord Shiva and start chanting Om Namah Shivaya. Okay? Now let's see some of the benefits of chanting this mantra. Okay? So the number one reason for all you kids, because all of you guys are in either elementary school or middle school or high school, right? You, if you chant this month, if like supposing you are not able to focus on your studies, you're, you're stuck on a problem, you're not understanding something, you meditate for some time, you sit down and chant Om Namah Shivaya. It helps you focus, right? It activates your um, crown chakra. It will calm your mind. It will help you focus. It will energize this part of your brain, right? And then you can focus on your studies better. You, you'll understand the problems better. Your mind will be activated and open, right? So that is the number one benefit for, for kids who are, you know, like you guys who are in school right now, who need to focus, who are doing a lot of work. Then it also makes you have a lot of gratitude towards God. When you sit like this and chant Om Namah Shiva, you're thinking of Lord Shiva, right? It makes you uh, realize God. It makes, generates a sense of gratitude towards God, right? So let's say you're not feeling confident or let's say you have a soccer match tomorrow, but you think that, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, I don't think I can run fast enough. I don't think I can make that goal or say you have a swimming competition or you have a tennis match. You know, you chant this mantra you realize the hidden strengths that are inside you. You know, you feel confident all of a sudden. You feel like God has given some suddenly some kind of energy to you. So all these positive benefits you'll get if you if you sit down and chant Om Namah Shivaya for as long as as much time as you have. If you cannot do it for 108 times, just do it for any number of times, as long as it's an odd number. Okay. All right, so that's Om Namah Shivaya. Now let's go down to the next extremely, extremely popular mantra, which almost everybody, all your parents, grandparents, everybody would know this mantra. Okay, it's called Gayatri Mantra. Um, does anybody know Gayatri Mantra? Okay, I think- I do. I do. Okay. I do. I do. Awesome. So now Gayatri Mantra is one of the very old, thousands of years old mantra. It first made an appearance in Rig Veda. Now, do you guys know about the Vedas in Hinduism? So Vedas are like very, very old scriptures, basically. It's an ancient collection of different Vedic Sanskrit hymns. Right, it has a. It's basically a knowledge of verses. It's one of the oldest and most sacred books of Hinduism. It was uh, composed in maybe like fifteen hundred BC or something like that. So it has a collection of around a thousand uh, different verses, and Gayatri Mantra was first found in the Rig Veda. So and it it was used thousands of years before that as well. Okay, so it's one of the most important texts of Hinduism. Uh, well. All right, so let's start by chanting Gayatri Mantra. Okay, everybody's ready? Sit straight, close your eyes, and repeat after me, okay? All right. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Tatsavitur Varenyam. Vargo Deva Seemahe Jive Yona Pitodaya. Vargo Deva Seemahe Dhimahe Dhiyo Yona Prachodaya. 
Was that easy? It's very simple. Let's do it again. Okay. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Tat Savitur Varenyam. Vargo Devasya Dhimani. Vargo Devasya Dhimani. Dhi yo yo na prachodayat. Now let's see what it means. Let's see what the rough translation of Gayatri Mantra is. Okay. So this is the rough translation of Gayatri Mantra. It means that we meditate on the glory of the creator. Who is the creator? Creator is God. He who has created the universe, who is worthy of worship, and who is the embodiment of knowledge and light, who is the remover of sin and ignorance. May you open our hearts and enlighten our intellect. Right? So we are asking the creator who has created this universe, who has made light and knowledge, that please remove all the sin and all the ignorance. Please open our hearts and please enlighten our mind and our intellect. Okay? So that's the rough translation of what Gayatri Mantra means. So Gayatri Mantra, again, is one of the most popular mantras. Anybody, literally almost everybody would know Gayatri Mantra, right? It's very easy to recite. It doesn't take too much time. It's very easy to remember. So it has also, there has a lot of research has been done on the effects of these mantras. You know, the scientists, what they have done is they, um, they get some volunteers, they make them sit and they make them chant these mantras, Om Namah Shivaya or the Gayatri Mantra, right? And then they attach different devices to their heads and everything. And study the effects that what, when they chant these mantra, what's happening to their bodies. And all these things like increase in concentration, calming of the mind, increasing focus, all these have been researched by scientists, right? And it improves your pattern of the breathing and everything like that. It keeps your heart healthy. So all these things are not just, you know, some like your mom and dad are just talking to you about that. They are all being researched over thousands and thousands of years and they have these proven benefits. So over here it's listed, like these are the numerous benefits of Gayatri Mantra. It increases learning power. It increases your concentration. It brings prosperity. It gives people eternal power. It's very good for peace. Let's say like you have a, had a fight with your friend or something like that and something is not going right in school or maybe your mom said something, you're fighting with your sibling, come and sit, sit in this position and start chanting Gayatri Mantra and it will give you peace. It will calm your mind down. It will improve your breathing. So you, you can easily connect to God also with it. It improves your heart. It improves the quality of overall your life. Okay, so before I stop, let's chant Gayatri Mantra once again, okay? Everybody is ready? Okay. Let's sit. Okay, ready? Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Pargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodayat Okay. Uh, Ruthvi, you have a question, Beta? Should we start yeah, writing I mean, on my paper now? Writing on your paper? 
Yeah. What do you want to write? I mean, the strokes that you're talking about. Sure, you can write it if you want. Oh. Okay. 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 So uh, we talked about two important mantras, right? That every everyone should know. One is Om Namah Shivaya and one is the Gayatri Mantra. Okay? Easy? All right. Now let's go to, so those are mantras. Now let's go to what is a shlok. All right. So what is a shlok? A shlok is sort of some, you can call it like a poem, okay? Or a rhythmic verse. It could be taken, say, either from a story, from a devotional song, from a hymn, or from any book, like, say, Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita has many, many shlokas. Okay? So, shlok is not like a mantra. So, in a mantra, the focus is on the sounds. Okay? So, the focus is on the actual mantra, how you recite it. You sit in a particular position, you recite the mantra. It has all these positive effects on you. It may or may not have a specific meaning, right? It's a combination of sounds which have a deep spiritual significance. Shlok is more like a poem. They have specific definite meanings, right? It could be in the praise of a particular God. It could be a shlok, could be like a short poem, which is part of a book like Ramayan or Bhagavad Gita or any other book. It could be like a story, something like that, okay? So let's take a look. Okay, who is this God? I'm sure every, every one of you knows. Ganesha. Right? Ganesha. Ganesha. Yeah. It's Lord Ganesha, or we can also call him Ganpati. Right? So let's talk about one of the most popular shlokas right now, which is in praise of Lord Ganesha. Okay? This is a shloka which, you know, almost everybody would have heard sometime or the other. You know, we have that festival called Ganesh Chaturthi. So this is one of the popular shlokas which everybody sings on that day. Okay, so everybody is ready to chant with me. Repeat after me, okay? Vakratunda Mahakaya Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignan Kurume Deva Sarvakarieshu Sarvada. Okay, let's say it three times now. Okay, so now the second time Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Tama Prabha. Prabha. Nirvignan, Nirvignan. Kurume Deva, Kurume Deva. Sarva Karyeshu, Sarva Karyeshu. Sarvada. Sarvada. All right. Now the last time. Vakratunda Mahakaya, Vakratunda Mahakaya. Surya Koti Sama Prabha. Nirvignam Kurume Deva. Nirvignam Kurume Deva. Sarva Karyeshu Sarvada. Excellent. Very good, everybody. All right. Now let's see what it the literal meaning of it is. Okay. It means, O Lord Ganesha, with the curved trunk and the one with the majestic huge body, right? So Lord Ganesha has that, has that trunk, right? Everybody knows that. And he has a huge body. The one whose brilliance is equal to billions of suns. O Lord, I ask thee to please free my path from all obstacles. That means remove all difficulties, all obstacles that come in my path. And bless me so that all my efforts are successful. Okay. So Lord Ganesha, who knows about Lord Ganesha and why is he so important? 
so he is also called vignahar right vignahar literally means remover of all obstacles so in hinduism like amongst kashmiris or anyone before we start any puja right be it for any god shiv parvati vishnu any god we first start with a prayer for lord ganesha because they say that if you do not start your prayer with ganesha it your puja will be incomplete okay any other puja that you do will not be considered complete unless you start with lord ganesha okay who knows okay let me tell you a story right about um so who are lord ganesha's parents who knows yes aryana tell me shiva and parvati very good so lord shiva and parvati are ganesha's parents right and who can tell me who is the brother of lord ganesha yes aryana kartikeya very good so lord ganesha has a brother kartikeya and his parents are lord shiva and parvati so one day what happened was kartikeya told ganesh okay ganesh i want to give you a challenge right uh let's see who can circle the whole universe who can circle the whole universe fastest because kartikeya had a big chariot right so he was very proud of himself and he thought that i'm very fast and i can um, you know beat ganesha any day so he said ganesha let's do this challenge okay let's see who can circle the whole universe the fastest okay so ganesha accepted this challenge he said of course let's do it okay so then they started and kartikeya went on his chariot and he started circling the whole universe and you know what ganesha did aryana knows the story great so you know what ganesha did he just circled his parents lord shiva and parvati right and then he won the challenge so kartikeya came back and he said that hey you didn't even go i came i circled the whole universe and i came back and you are still here so what happened and ganesha said my my parents lord shiva and parvati are my universe and i just circled them once so and that's so kartikeya was like stunned he was like that's absolutely right so ganesha is uh, known to be very very wise okay he's also the god of wisdom um so there are many many stories of lord ganesha how you know i don't know if you guys have seen those shows that come on tv those cartoon shows they have lots and lots of stories of ganesha how he was so smart and witty um so he is one of the most important gods in hinduism there is a festival called ganesh chaturthi right in which you know you have you worship lord ganesha for 10 days and in the end there's a whole festival and then you do the visarjan it's a big big um, festival in the state of maharashtra right so vakratunda mahakaya is one of the most important and easy to remember shloka which is in the praise of lord ganesha okay now so all right everybody we are only going to go over these three because you know i don't want to confuse you guys with too many in one day okay so um let's let me ask you a few questions and let's see who can answer okay is everybody ready okay who can tell me the three benefits of reciting om namah shivaya raise your hand what happens when we what did i tell you what happens if you sit like this straight close your eyes and recite om namah shivaya say 11 times or 108 times or even three times what will happen what benefits will you get 
Can anybody answer? Or should I tell you then? Okay. The number one thing that will happen is your brain, your energy, your, your crown chakra, it will get activated. Okay. And you'll be able to focus on your studies better. You'll understand everything better. You can concentrate on what you're reading or what you're writing or if you're playing a game or something like that. Your focus and concentration will improve a lot. Okay, that is the number one benefit. The number two benefit is it will calm your mind down. Okay, it will make you calm, focused. Number three is it's good for your heart. You know, when you chant any mantra, you're breathing in a particular pattern that rhythmic breathing is very good for your heart. It's good for your whole body, but it's especially good for your heart and your, and your brain. It activates all the chakras. Okay, so if you want to have a strong, healthy mind, if you want to have a strong focus, concentration and good mental power, chanting these mantras is, is what will help you. Okay. Now, does anybody know what is the best time to chant any mantra, Gayatri Mantra or Om Namah Shivaya? So ideally, what we should do is when you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you wash your face. Yes, yes, Neva, tell me. You want to say something? It's morning. Huh? She's, saying She's saying morning. Oh, morning. Exactly. Yes, you're absolutely right. So in the morning, after we have taken our bath, or let's say it's very cold, it's winters, you don't want to take a bath. That's fine too. As it's long as you so brush cold. Teeth, as long as you brush your teeth and wash your face, you can come sit and chant these mantras, okay? So morning time is a really good time to do that. Another, if you, let's say, if you skip doing it in the morning, what's another good time to do it? You know, just that time when the sun is setting, it's called dusk, right? When the sun is about to set, it's going down. That's another very, very good time to sit and do any kind of meditation or chant these mantras, okay? Now, let's say if you can't do it in the morning, you can't do it. So it's okay to do it anytime. Okay, there are no restrictions or rules that, you know, you have to do it only at a particular time. You can do it anytime you, you are free or you can find time in a day. It's just the recommended or suggested time to get the most benefit out of these mantras. Or if you do it in the morning, the first thing in the morning after you brush your teeth and wash your face. Or you do it in the evening when the sun is about to set. Okay. All right. Now, anybody has any questions? So after the question and answer session, we'll go and do, we'll do a craft. Anyone has any questions? Yes. Yes, Ruthvi, tell me. That my mom didn't get the materials for the craft. No problem. Do you have, you can go and get it right now. Do you have this kind of a paper? At yeah, home? I can put it over this one. Yeah, that's perfect. That's all we need. Yes, uh, Tanya, you had a question. Rohan, Rohan is your name? Oh, or maybe I'm, you have a question, Mika? No? Oh, okay. All right. So nobody else has any questions? Okay. All right. Oh, Ariana is saying we eat rote on that day. Exactly. Yep. And who doesn't love rote, right? It's my favorite. I love it. All right, guys. Okay. Now craft time. Okay. So you know what we're going to do? I was thinking we're going to make like this kind of a paper, uh, paper pyramid. Something like this. And then we can write Om Namah Shivai here. Okay, and then you can just keep it on your desk or table or you know wherever, wherever you 
you have your workstation and then you can just keep it and you can just look at it, right? All right, so let's start with this, okay? So now, okay, it's very simple. Just follow, just follow what I'm doing. It's very, very simple. Just take any paper like this, okay? All right, let me, all right. Okay, just take any paper like this, okay? The first step is folding it like this, okay? So let's do that. Fold it like this. Just make like a strong line so that you're able to see the line. Okay, like this. Is everybody following? Let me know if any one of you is not able to follow, okay? So once you fold the paper in half, you, you'll see this line over here, okay? Next, what do we do next? Open it, okay? And then fold it like this, okay? First you folded it like this, next we'll fold it like this. See? Now it has this line and this line here. Okay, everybody has this? Everybody has this? Okay, now the next thing what we're gonna do is, you see this corner here? Take this corner and put it here, okay? So all you have to do is take this corner and put it here. So I have to keep it on the table and do it because I cannot do it in the air, but this is what I'm talking about. So just put this like this. Okay, and then make, fold it and make another line, okay? If anybody can't understand, ask me again. And then once you have done that, you will have this line here. Got it? You have to, you have to fold, put this corner here and this corner here and make a line, right? So now I'm going to do it in the other way. I'm going to put it here like this. See, I'm putting it here and then I'm just going to make a line. Okay, and then the other way. So when I open the paper, I have these lines here. Does everybody have these lines on their papers? Ready? Should I go to the next step? Okay. Now what we're gonna do is, you see this corner? Is everybody ready? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, you see this? I'm going to put this like this. 
Okay, so you take this corner and just line it over here like this. Okay, so let me show you. Like this. So do this on all four sides. This, 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 and this. Okay. See, it will look like this then. Okay. Then what you do is, you see this line in the middle? Just fold it like this. Can everybody do it or no? See. see like this so you see this line just pick it up and do it like this and we do that same thing to this line as well what i'll do is i'll send you guys a youtube link for this lantern as well so if any of you guys are not able to do it you know, you can just watch that and make it by yourself. Okay. I'll have to search and I'll send you guys a YouTube link. So in the end, it will become like this. Okay. So then you have these open ends. You can, which you can always use a glue stick and just stick it there. You can use a glue and then you can just stick it like this. You can use another glue and stick it over there as well. All right. Here we have this lantern here. Glue off. Okay. So this is the kind of paper lantern that we have ready. And once you have this ready, on it has four sides, right? One, two, three, four. So you can write Om Namah Shivaya and then you can make the symbol Om. Let me show you how. Yeah, you can start by something like this on one side. Okay, you can do this. Then the next one, let's write in English. Om. Nama Shivai. Okay, let me do this. Let me in the chat. Wait, let me find the YouTube link for this and send it to you guys. It will be helpful. In case, you know, many of you didn't follow. Okay, here it is. 
So I've sent the YouTube link in this chat. So if you guys want, you can, you just need one paper, that's it. It's a very, very simple craft. So you just need this paper, right? And then you can get this lantern out of it. And then you guys can color it, decorate it, do whatever you want. If you want to write Om Namah Shivai, you can write Om Namah Shivai and you can keep it on your table so that anytime during the day, if you see that, you're like, oh, let me just, why don't I just sit and chant? Maybe just say Om Namah Shivai one time or three times or you know, how many times you want. You know, you can count on your fingers. Like it's very easy to say it 11 times. You have 10 fingers. So you can do Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah, you can do Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai. You can count till 10 and then once more. So that's 11 times. So it's very, very easy to do. Okay. All right, guys. I think that's the end of the session. So did you guys learn anything new? Yeah. Yes. 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 Tell me, Ruthri, what is your question? We learn slope. You learn shlokas, and what is the what is Om Namah Shivaya? Is it a shlok or a mantra? Mantra. Yes, very good. And what other mantra did you learn? Om, Om Namaha. That's called Gayatri mantra. Okay. Okay. And what shlok did you learn? Can anyone tell me what shlok they learned today? We learned Vakratunda Mahakaya, which is a shlok in the praise of Lord Ganesha. Okay. All right. Anybody has any other questions? If not, we can just conclude the session then. Okay. So well explained, Damini. I, for one, learned the difference between a mantra and a shloka. Right, guys? Me too. Me too. Adults got a refresher too. Me too. Awesome. Awesome. And kids are really awesome. Look at the patience and focus with which they were listening. That was yes. amazing. Very impressive. Amazing for your age group, really brilliant kids. Thank you so much, Damini, for doing this again. Hopefully we'll have you again and uh, we'll go a level ahead and, uh, you know, learn further shlokas and- Thank uh, you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I sent the YouTube link to everyone in the chat, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, if somebody else wants it, just ping me and I, know I can send it to you guys. Damini, could you put that in our uh, WhatsApp group chat also? Yeah, yeah. Try I'll to, do that. Yeah, that would be great. Awesome. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of the Sunday and um, all the best for school tomorrow. I hope everyone's homework is done and you're all ready. Okay? Bye. Bye-bye.